smack dab in the middle of all those beautiful places that I've been showing you in the recent videos is home. Well, a lot of people aren't even aware this place exists. But first, where do we come from? Well, Canada, Okanagan Valley, British Columbia, beautiful place. And certainly a lifestyle and a life that most people thought we were absolutely nuts to walk away from. But you know, sometimes in life, certain things, even those, are worth walking away from. And so we did. And in Panama, waiting for us was Rogalo de Dios. And in July of 2006, we went there. We thought we were going to Costa Rica. We prayed. Panama wasn't even on our list, but here we are. Then, the longest road trip of our lives started. They wouldn't fly our dog in the heat of summer. And so we, uh, we drove all the way down to Panama. 23, oh, <laughs> never do that again. Anyway. So we end up in this place that's just an absolute wonderful place. Um, and we would never known it existed. We never could have known it existed. Most people don't. Um, and really, it's surprisingly affordable. Homes range between 120000 and 250000 for really nice homes. And mansions for maybe 350000 or 290. And all around us is the most pristine nature that you can imagine. And boy, oh boy, do we enjoy it. 365 days a year of perfect spring weather. And of course, as you can see, beautiful flowers. Anyway, we're only 50 minutes to the city and a little longer to modern hospitals, 30 minutes to the closest one, 35 minutes to the international airport, 25 minutes to supermarkets, and about an hour and a half by car now, a good road, to San Blas, Coronado, a little less than two hours, depending on traffic. And... Uh, there's no one that gets into this place uh, uninvited. Why is that important to us? Well, <laughs> this is the reason we left Canada. Across the lake from us lived this old woman looking, searching frantically for us. At university together, Jen and I got engaged many years ago. And her uh, mother had been planning to move their family to Canada, and she did that. She didn't care about us. Uh, so for us, oh, Canada, <laughs> well, it wasn't the start of an anthem, but a lament. Uh, once there, Jen wrote me and said, please come rescue me. I just can't take it anymore. So I sold my car in stereo and had just enough money for a return ticket in mine. And so on Christmas Eve in 1978 in Kitchener, Ontario, um, we returned from shopping, buying gifts, find our suitcases out in the snow. Jen's dad ordered to take us to a deserted downtown, drop us off there. Well, anyway, we were forced to stay in hotels to survive. We didn't know anybody. Those days, travel agencies didn't work over Christmas. I gave what was left of my rescue dollars to Jen and left back for Africa defeated alone. Now it was all up to Jen. She took only another seven months to save up enough money to fly back to Africa. And uh, we were married within 14 days, some seven years and seven months after we first met and fell in love. This did result in Jen ultimately getting disowned by her mother. But anyway, we survived. And you know what? In Panama, most all of us expats are survivors because we all escaped from some other horrible stuff. Anyway, this was our official um, uh, photos from our wedding, etc. And uh, we had a lovely time. It was just eight people, a student wedding, no, no money to do much of anything really. It's memorable. And then we went to my godfather's farm in the African bush fell. You know, things just progressed very nicely from there. Jen's childhood wishes to have two boys at least, maybe more, but uh, came true. And uh, we've uh, watched as these boys have grown into men and got married to Panamanian girls, or women actually, and started having kids. And we're very proud grandparents and parents. Jen homeschooled and in Canada, that's really a good idea. Anyway, one of our childhood wishes we never thought would come true is that we'd live in a national park with rivers, waterfalls and pools right next to them. Well, it did. Our wish only to ever be married to each other also came true one, about three times. <laughs> we, uh, the reason for that was that whenever we needed our old South African apartheid government documents uh, to be uh, accepted by governments, they didn't. So we got married again three times. Anyway, the altitude where we live is, is 3,000 feet. The climate is fantastic uh, year-round, and it's a perfect place to survive and thrive. 
finally Jen triumphed over the Black Queen. And we all lived happily ever after and continue to do so in far away Panama. I'm Nicholas in our son's novels. Real name Ian, alias Old What's his name. And I'll be turning 64 this year. As the sun sets over the Chagres National Park, bye for now from Nicholas and Lizzie in Panama, where, by the way, Jen's life was saved simply by coming here. In Canada, they never picked up what would become an intracystic papillary carcinoma 2.2 centimeters in the right breast that had been there since Jen's early 40. Her sister, four years younger than her in Canada with its free medical system, had a similar problem but a completely different, very sad outcome. So, Panama, it's where fairy tales come true. It can happen to you if you're young enough.